Hi guys and welcome to my in-depth look at Windows 10 on a Mac on the MacBook Pro 14 Retina in my case. And first of all, big shout out to Tech Aries because their article and their reply to me at G Plus gave me the little bump I needed to try it for myself. Because the reason why I'm doing this video, I was searching on YouTube and on some other things on Google to find some useful information about Windows 10 on a Mac. I know it is possible with Bootcamp, but what I couldn't find any useful information, how well does it work? Does everything work flawless? Because what I got so far is there were always some driver issues, some things weren't working, the battery life was bad, the performance wasn't that great. So I wanted to try it for myself and I will give you all the information you would need if you are maybe interested in doing it yourself. And I want to answer one question first. Why would you try Windows on a Mac in the first place? For me, the first re really easy answer is because I can. The second one is for games, because if you have a Mac system with a lot more hardware than for example here the MacBook Pro, like a MacBook, MacBook Pro 15 or something like that, you wanna make use of that hardware and play games which you don't get on a Mac OS. Another reason for that is Windows only games or Windows only apps that you wanna use as well, but a virtual machine just doesn't cut it or you don't wanna use a virtual machine in certain cases. And there's another reason and that one is actually the one I wanted to try it because I get the fantastic hardware because I am a really big fan of the Apple hardware but I can also combine it with the great Windows 10 experience because I use Windows 10 on my desktop at home. I use it on all my review units, on all my review laptops and tablets and I'm a big fan of it and I really wanted to try it on the Mac as well to see if it could maybe become my daily driver but I will answer that later. So first of all, if you want to do it, what do you need? There is a Techno Buffalo video that explains it, but just real quick what you have to do. What you have to do is download the Windows 10 ESO. You can get it quite easily. Just check, I think, the Tech Aries article or my description. What you will then have to do is start the Bootcamp Assistant on your Mac, create an USB drive. This will install all the necessary things and after this, you will have to partition your drive. And this is really important because you will have to choose a size. And once you have done this, you can't change the size anymore. And if you want to use it more than just occasionally, choose a bigger size because I personally almost regret it already because I only chose 70 gigabytes. And after the installation and all my apps, I have 40 gigabytes left, which is good enough, but I would definitely wish I had done it a little bit bigger. So choose the right size. After that, it will install Windows 10 as on pretty much any other device. It will do go through the setup process and all that, that is fine. Once you have Windows 10 installed, you should make a few things. Check the Apple update software if it needs to do some updates on, for example, Bootcamp, because now we have Bootcamp 6, which has all the necessary drivers. And if you have a Mac starting from about 2012, you should be good to go. Personally, I didn't, I already had Bootcamp 6, so I was fine. What you will then have to do, let's check this here. You can now check the bootcamp software itself or the system panel. If you can see it here, this is the system panel. And here you have a few options that you can choose between. You can choose which system you want as the default one. For example, I have Windows right now. You can also set it to Mac OS. But if you start your, PC or your Mac, you can just use the option button and choose between while during the boot. On the keyboard session, you also have two options for for some reason, one has gone right now. Let me quickly try to get it back, which is a little bit odd. Okay, now we have it back again. No, sure, not sure why it happened, I guess because of the recording. You can change how long the backlight will be on after you don't use it anymore and you can use the function lock if you want to. You also have a trackpad software where you can select click to tap and some other things, but I would definitely recommend you if you want to use it for longer than just once, get the software called Trackpad++ and huge shout out. You can get the link to the description to the original video where I found this app because this will install a trackpad driver for your Mac that will give you most of the functionalities back you already had on Mac OS that you usually miss out on a Windows desktop because as you can quickly see here, you have four finger gestures 
to switch between your desktops, you have a lot more options and you can quickly see what we have. We have four finger gestures for swipe up, tap, swipe down, also swipe left and swipe right. The same for three finger gestures. You also have a few more options for two finger gestures to adjust the scroll sensitivity, pinch to zoom, swipe to go back, edge gestures, all that works. You can also adjust the sensitivity of the trackpad. So you get a lot more options back. It isn't quite on the level, for example, if you have better touch tool on the Mac, but it gives you a lot more customizability. And it is actually a way more powerful trackpad experience as it usually is on Windows 10 with a Windows 10 trackpad. This is quite odd because you have actually a better trackpad right now. And just for you to see how well it works, let's get into it and see how well the scrolling the scrolling actually is still a little bit different because as you can maybe see here right now the scrolling is smooth and it mostly works but it's just not the same as on a mac os it is smooth as you can see here but it's just a little bit different but this is mostly due to the apps and also if you check for example chrome you will maybe see an even bigger difference here because here we don't have any smooth scrolling, but this is fine for me because I will reduce the brightness a little bit so you can see something. As you can see here, the scrolling with a mouse is not smooth, but this is how I want it on a mouse. If you use it though with the touchpad, as you can see, it's also not smooth. I'm pretty sure you can get that back with some extensions because for this mouse, there is an extension to get smooth scrolling back, but I didn't install it because I didn't want to. So just real quick, what you also can do then is update all the drivers, but for you to see, were there any issues during the installation? First of all, no, I had no issues. It installed Windows just fine. No problems here at all. The Windows installation went smooth is but actually better than some of my actual Windows 10 devices that I had it. And after that, it pretty much feels exactly as any other Windows desktop. So what I wanted to t talk about now, how well does it work? So let's get back here and check what works and what doesn't. First of all, Bluetooth works. I tried it with this mouse. I also tried it with a Bluetooth speaker. That worked fine. The USB ports worked fine. I could install my USB microphone and all that without any issues, no limitations. Also the trackpad, as I already talked about, works fine. The mouse works fine. Also the keyboard, as you can see, brightness control works as it is supposed to. Media controls work as well. I don't have anything playing, but just for you to see that the speakers also work. So as you can see, those work as well. Brightness for the keys works as well. You don't see that right now, of course. And the same goes for the volume. That one works as well. You can mute it. The one thing that doesn't work are those two buttons because these are Mac specific, but I'm pretty sure there's also a way to get that working as well. So all that works, all the Windows specific drivers I could install all I wanted to worked all fine. Performance is easily on par with the Mac itself and on any other comparable system. I had no issues as you can see scrolling with the browser. I also used Adobe Premiere to edit a video, worked just fine, no hiccups at all, all the drivers worked fine, performance was absolutely brilliant, it subjectively even feels slightly better, with trackpad plus plus you get all the trackpad features back again. About the battery life though, that could be a big deal breaker or not, because I already saw some people already saying the battery life is not as good. So here's what I did. I didn't, I wasn't fine enough with just one cycle. So I did at least two to see if there are any differences. My first cycle was about four and a half hours of screen on time with 60% brightness. And the second one was closer to five hours, but actually with about one hour of video editing. And this doesn't maybe sound a lot because many people say they get eight hours of screen of use out of the MacBook Pro 13. Personally, I didn't. I get about five hours, maybe to six hours. So I'm not losing much and I'm pretty sure in normal use, I won't really notice that much of a difference because I barely ever drain my battery full. Mostly what I do is do video editing and then I have it plugged in anyways. And if I use it just for typing an article or so, those five hours are easily good enough for me. And if you maybe need a little bit more battery and if Mac OS really gets you that, just use Mac OS when you are out and about. So this shouldn't be the issue. Any additional notes? 
is it worth jumping to Windows 10 on a Mac? And what else? For example, for, for this is really depends on you. If you are an, art, an hardcore OS X user, then it doesn't make much sense, of course. If you need specific Windows apps though to work, then it's definitely worth trying out if your virtual machine isn't good enough. Also, it is better for games. But there's one thing to consider. You won't get the the fully full gigabytes of your storage back because you won't see what is on the Mac OS and vice versa. Those are departed from each other, but that's understandable because they use a different file format. So once again, be sure to make a big enough partition. Is it daily, ma daily driver material for now? Personally, I would say after using it for two cycles, absolutely yes, for me, because the performance is there. The great thing actually is the scaling here, because I used 100% of scaling on a resolution of 2560 by 1600, which usually shouldn't work, because I should at least have 125 or 150% to get a good enough size, but I had with 100% no scaling issues, actually less than on any high resolution device on Windows 10. So whatever they did here, they did absolutely brilliant, because this gives me the best of both worlds, the great hardware of the Apple MacBook Pro and the great software of Windows 10 that is just more convenient for me to use since it's my daily driver on all the review units and on my desktop itself. I still use Mac OS from time to time and I definitely know to appreciate some of its benefits as well. But for everyone who wants to jump maybe to Windows and just check it, that's definitely worth it. There is though a reason for me to make a follow-up video and I will answer a few of those questions in a follow-up video maybe two weeks later. The first one, are there any limitations or issues after a longer time of use? Any driver things or any update specific things? I will talk about that. Also, and that is pretty much the most important thing, how is the battery life over the long term? Is it closer to macOS or is there a big difference there? And especially what is important for me, the standby drain. Because the standby drain on macOS is phenomenal. I never have almost any standby drain, but on all Windows devices I review, I shut them down to save them because the drain on standby is just a little bit too high in my experience. And then after two weeks, I will give you a final conclusion if it is my daily driver right now. I really hope this video was helpful to you. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and reshare this video. And if you have any further questions or things to say, just leave them down in the comments. Until next time, bye. I'll be back.